Thank you. Can you have a long time with us? Yeah. <laughs> we are so happy to have you here. And we are so happy to have you here. We are so happy to have you here. We are so happy to And thinking of who to interview, who you came up with you, and we can both kind of resonate you with your cheerful, your cheerful spirit that that you have, and the encounters you have with us, the little encounters you have with us, it's it's fruitful. So we welcome you to the interview. Be very, very, very happy to have you. I feel always inspired when I. Encounter, have an encounter with you, and I leave the library, and I thoroughly enjoy my students. You know, it's not like I'm in control and I, you know, dictate. I treat them equally, and I like to see how they develop and how they grow, and how they grow the passion and the love for the studies that they that they are doing and that they have enrolled with. So for me, it gives me great joy to interact. Thank you. And in reference to you being a, an associate teacher, it's probably a lot. And you have to be at home as well. You have a whole personal life. At home. How do you balance being in your professional life and in your personal life? All the responsibilities that you have. So for me, it's balancing that try aid in health. Your mind, your body, and your soul. So when I speak of mind, I think As I would refer to mental health, we've come through a pandemic and we've seen what you know it did to mental health. So for me, mental health is important because if mental health is out of balance, then it affects your your body and your soul. So if I think of mental health, I think of doing things you know that would. Make you happy, that will make you feel satisfied, that will uplift you. Simple things. My philosophy also is simple. Keep life simple and clean. So, mental health. Go out into nature for me. You know, connect with nature. Nature teaches us a lot. Nature has a lot of wisdom. So, just by going to the beach, walking barefoot in the sun. I mean, in the beach, on the sand. Getting, you know, the feeling of the sand on your feet, the water washing over your feet, breathing in, you know, the ocean. So simple things. Health, your body. Think of just simple diet. Keep it clean. Feed and nourish your body. You know, protect your body. And then I mentioned soul or spirit. You know, we are human beings. Connect with your Creator. You know, have a belief system and practice it. So for me, those are the things I try since I started studying. You know, um, phytotherapy and applying um, holistic health in my life for myself and my family. It, I just felt the sand under my feet, and you know, it made me to feel relaxed because even. Being a person who is interviewing someone, you can feel a little bit nervous. So I, I feel so relaxed, and I can even taste that peppermint in my mouth. <laughs> I must say, um, what you have told us now, it, it taught me also as as it taught for you a lot, and it sets a foundation. Like I asked you, how do you balance the two? And I've never thought of an answer like yours. I've never thought of one. I just thought, okay, let's just be organized. But I never thought of how to mentally yeah. be at peace. Yeah. And once that foundation is set, I feel like you can see more clear and you can organize better. So I want to ask you, how do you encourage students, like especially young women, with self doubt, um, in reference to them aspiring their academic goals? Very important. You know, almost three words come to mind when I think of what you said, especially encouraging young female students: dreams, focus, and purpose. So, have a dream, visualize it, put the necessary steps on on a paper, and continue your journey. 
And life is all about creating yourself, you know. Take your opportunities. Your journey differs from the next uh, person's journey or if you want the next uh, lady's journey. So, if you must pause for a bit, don't quit. Change your direction. Dr. Peterson, I just want to ask you two more questions. What advice will you give to young women aspiring to become lecturers or researchers in your field? There is nothing that a woman can't accomplish. I would say, think of the word impossible. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. In my field of career, I would encourage young ladies to never give up learning, you know. Expand your horizons. There's always new things to add to your life and those things add growth. So never stop growing. Just like you, you're saying that women need to strive, they constantly need to just continue walking. It reminds me in school, we, we done a famous poem called, I think it's called Still I Rise. Yes. Or I Rise by Maya Angelou. I don't know the poem, but I know how it made me feel. Finally, uh, Dr. Peterson, I would like to ask you, is there any particular achievement or milestone in your career that you are most proud of and what does it signify for you as a woman? So, the university identified me as part of the top 15 top achievers in my field of study and therefore Golden Key has awarded me an invitation to accept membership and I have forgotten about that. So, And it also, you know, drives me to further my education. Like I said, the journey continues. So thank you for asking me that. Aww. Thank you. Dr. Peterson would like to say thank you for your time, thank you for the preparation of this interview, and thank you for the messages that you have taught us through this interview, and also the wishes for the women. From my side and Lucretia, and on behalf of the UWC Library, we have a small token for you, just to say thank you to you for all that you have done and for thank coming for the interview. You. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you ladies, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> lovely, thank you. <laughs>